Welcome to the second day of the virtual PhD tour. The virtual PhD tour is organized by French Embassy in India through Campus France and the French Institute of India. Today's theme is ecology, biodiversity, and agronomy. I am Nidhi Chopra, manager at Campus France Chandigarh, would be moderating this session. To give you brief about Campus France, uh, Campus France is a French government organization established by the Ministry of Higher Education Affairs and Ministry of Foreign Affairs to promote studies in France. In India, Campus France have 13 offices in different cities and they are directly operated by the French Embassy in India. Uh, through Campus France, we provide personalized counseling sessions and organize various workshops throughout the year for the students to look for higher education in France. Joined by me is Ms. Ambika Anil Kumar. Ambika is the Dipti Atashe uh, Scientific and University Corporation and also the Scientific Coordinator at the French Embassy in India. I'm also joined by my colleague, Ms. Soumya Jatwani, Campus France Manager at Jaipur. Soumya would be the support moderator for the today's session. Now let me introduce to the panelists for today's session. We have with us Dr. Edmund Rock, Research Director, French National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and Environment. Uh, besides, Dr. Rock is also a scientific officer in the International Affairs of Indra in charge of India and South Asia. He will present the structure of Indra and how the Institute is also related with training that can give opportunities for Indian students. Our second panelist is uh, Professor Veronique Gerard from the University de Toulouse. Uh, Veronique Gerard is a professor of physiology at the Veterinary School of Toulouse and the head of research unit in food toxicology and the future deputy director of PhD school SEVA. Our third panelist is Professor Magli Dufour from Sirat. She's a higher education and training officer, research and strategy management. Welcome all, we are honored to have you today. We are also joined by alumni, Mr. Somin Malik. Somin is from Kolkata. He completed his bachelor and master's from Aisar Tiruvantampuram and is now pursuing his uh, PhD on herbivore plant interaction at the University of Wren. Welcome, Somin. We also welcome the participants of today's session. Just to tell you, you would, be, you would remain muted throughout. And if you have any questions, you can type it in the chat box. We would be taking it uh, in the question answer session. Now, hailed around the world, French research counts many Nobel Prize winners among its ranks. Among the most recent are Esther Duflo, Economy in 2019, Gerard Mouraud in Physics in 2018, Jean-Pierre Sauvage in chemistry in 2016, Patrick Moriano in literature, Jean Tirole in economics in 2014, and Serge Haroche physics in 2012. In total, 65 Nobel Prizes have been awarded to French people, which ranks France fourth among countries. In mathematics, almost one third of all field medal recipients have come from French laboratories, including 10 from that of Ecole Normale Superior. France is second in the world in terms of number of medals after the United States. Research in France knows neither borders nor nationality. 41% of those enrolled in French doctoral schools are foreigners and 54% of French scientific publications are the result of international collaboration. Additionally, Many French successes have come from the international research. To ensure this mix in French research, the CNRS has recruited approximately 30% of its researchers from abroad each year since 2010. Like the CNRS, many French research centers regularly op open specific positions to foreigners and invite people from around the world to teach in France. Now I let Ambika to draw a comparison of doing a PhD between Indi India and France. Uh, thank you, Nidhi. Uh, so good evening, everyone. I am Ambika, uh, scientific coordinator and uh, deputy attaché for uh, scientific and university cooperation 
I, I hope I'm audible to everyone. Is it okay? Okay. Yes. I am uh, located in Bangalore and I manage the south of India along with uh, my attache, Dr. Francois Xavier. Um, so it's good to have such a great lineup of uh, panelists uh, today to address your questions and concerns. And I'm sure uh, that in our last 30 minutes, which we have exclusively reserved for a question and answer session, we'll do justice to it. Uh, nevertheless, I would like to uh, brief you about the scientific landscape in India in this field of uh, ecology, biodiversity and agronomy and how that is going to benefit you in doing a PhD in France in this area. As you know, uh, India is quite rich and diverse when it comes to ecology and agronomy. We have a number of courses available here in India in institutes of varying structures which allow you to get a fair amount of exposure in this area. This scope could be broadened beyond organismal biology towards functional landscapes and ecosystems. Our education is yet to promote ecology as a career choice for scientists in a more extensive manner. This is precisely where uh, France comes into picture with the ecological diversity and plenty of opportunities in the field of agronomy as well. We can't wait to hear from our panelists what they can offer you. But before that, let me also brief you about the general application process of uh, doing a PhD in France. And uh, we can have more extensive discussions on this during our uh, Q&A sessions. So typically, a uh, PhD in France takes around three years and extendable to one more year uh, if needed, contrary to the five plus years of PhD in India. And of course, you need a master's degree to enroll for your PhD in France. Uh, uh, we can also discuss whether there can be any exceptions to this rule in quick Q&A sessions. Uh, so before enrolling into a PhD program, you need to find a thesis supervisor and a topic. And this can be done in two ways. One is by directly contacting your PI, who is your thesis supervisor, and sending him or her your CV and SOP. And no research proposals are entertained at this stage. And let me clarify, this is applicable only to science and engineering. And we also have uh, other portals, uh, which Nidhi will uh, mention uh, in the chat box uh, soon after we reach towards the end of the session about the different portals where you can actually find ads on PhD programs and you can apply and approach the PIs through that. So, uh, having done all of these, once a PI accepts you, the doctoral school also should accept you. And the funding is mandatory for PhD. If you're not supported by fellowships, you could be funded by the host university with a work contract of say three years. And from the embassy side, we offer short term fellowships for students already doing a PhD in India to go and have a short stint of about 10 months through Raman Sharpak fellowship. And one can also do a PhD in France through the bilateral agreement between Indo-French labs via CEFIPRA project. Apart from these fellowships, there are a number of fellowships offered by French institutions themselves. I hope we get to hear more about this uh, from our panelists. So without further ado, I pass on the floor back to the moderator and uh, enjoy the tour, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambika. And with this, I would like to invite our first panelist uh, for the session, Dr. Edmund Rock. Uh, floor is yours now. So I think, uh, Edmond, I think we lost. Edmund. I think, uh, yes. OK. Uh, so probably we can start with Veronique. If yes. So uh, ready? Professor Veronic, if you are ready with your slides, we can start yes. with you. Okay, yes. Is it okay? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Nidhi. Thank you for the invitation. So, hello, everybody. I will first present you the institutional positioning of French PhD school in agronomy, ecology, and biodiversity. As you can see, over the whole of France, nine graduate PhD programs related to these stems and are offered by French universities and some institutes of higher education, such as AgroBiotech. It is under the responsibility of these institutions that the PhD school, whose initials are in blue, organize the training of PhD students. 
uh, to fulfill their missions. The PhD school rely on research laboratories from public organizations, mainly from INRAE, the INRAE laboratory, that will be presented by my colleague uh, Edmond Work, but also CIRAD, the Agricultural Research Organization, working for development in the South regions, and also CNRS, the National Center for Scientific Research that cover all fields of research, and also some Institute of Higher Education in Agronomy and uh, Veterinary Science. And also, these institutions uh, are not awarded in the PhD diploma, they are strongly associated to the PhD school. So, at a national level, it's important to note that this institution are a member of a consortium named Agrinium. So Agrinium uh, coordinates actions at the level of uh, France to promote doctoral training policies of the different members, and particularly in the international dimension. So the Agrinium website is very interesting because it contains a database named Agrinium Labs that gives you access to uh, all description of the unit and research teams of the Agrinium members all over the France. I think it's important because the most suitable way to find a convenient PhD, I think, is to choose a relevant research laboratory and thus to, to the PhD school where it is affiliated. So now my talk will focus on the French uh, PhD school named uh, SCVAB. So that is located at Toulouse. Uh, Toulouse is um, in the south of France. It's, um, City, a largest, largest city of the region that is named Occitanie. So Occitanie also includes the city of Montpellier. Occitanie is important because it is a French leading region in agriculture and is, is considered as the first world pole of agronomic innovation. Now, the academic excellence of the, the region is comforted by first a government level university site of excellence at Montpellier. It is focused on agriculture, environment, and health. It is also comforted by the ranking of the universities of Toulouse and Montpellier in the top 100 of the Chanquette ranking for the field of agriculture and uh, veterinary science. It's important also to note that the Higher Education Institute of Agronomy in Montpellier, that is named Montpellier Supagro, occupies the 36th place in the QS World University ranking in the field of agriculture. So SCVAB are the initials of science for ecology, veterinary, agronomy, and bioengineering. So the PhD school is under the responsibility of three accredited institutions, the University Paul Sabatier, the National Polytechnic Institute of Toulouse, and the National Institute of Applied Science. The other public organizations like INRAE, CNRS, RRS, the Veterinary School of Toulouse, and the Higher Training School for Agricultural Education, INSFA, are strongly associated with the PhD school. So SCVAB relies on 21 research units from the different institutes with 60 research teams that are distributed uh, in six thematic axes. Uh, the thematic axis contributes to understanding the interaction between food and industrial production systems, and the biotic and abiotic factors of the, of the environment. I think the originality of uh, the doctoral school CEVAP is an integrated approach to address some of the main global challenges of the 21st century, that is feeding a growing population while sustainably managing territories, preserving natural resources, supporting innovation and integrating bioeconomy, as well as improving health. The other originality of the PhD school is its multidisciplinarity that is linked to the diversity of the objects of study. It can be animal, plant, microbe, and also the diversity of the scales of study, from the organized, organized to the ecosystems, the agro-systems, passing through all intermediate levels, 
groups, populations, communities, landscapes. So at Toulouse, the PhD school benefits of state-of-art technological platforms, uh, enomics, approach, metabolomic, flipsonic, and also in analytical chemistry, microscopy, and cytometry. Uh, the doctoral school also benefit of the international visibility of the government label laboratory of excellence that is named Tulip, like the flower. And this, uh, this laboratory promotes an interdisciplinary approach that combines geology and ecology, and this that is focused on the interaction between organisms within communities in natural and human modifying environments. So the PhD program of CEVAP will present a research potential of uh, 450 scientists that work on top ranking, top ranking research centers, and also 250 PhD students, among which 23% uh, are international students, about half coming from ASEAN. The good national and international attractiveness is the recognized strength of the PhD school, as well as uh, diversity, the great diversity of the founding source. As you can see here, about a quarter of PhD contracts are funded by higher education institutes, uh, universities. Now, this establishment rely on the PhD school to manage the awarding of the PhD contracts, or public contracts. 30% of the PhD contracts are funded by uh, public organizations like research institutes, mainly IHE. CNRS uh, in partnership with the region of Italian. Uh, foreign funding, including European programs, accounts for 23% of the PhD fan financing. Uh, partnership with industrials contribute to the financing of 15% of the PhD contracts, and the remaining students, about 50%, are doing the PhD within the Frank Mill framework of continuing education. Uh, besides the scientific program of the PhD, uh, the direction of the PhD school supervises students and ensures the follow-up of uh, the compulsory 100 hours of training that are made up of different types of teaching and training, including first advanced scientific and technical training. Uh, this training is provided by the scientists of the PhD school, but also professionalization modules, as for example, uh, knowledge of the business world, knowledge of the research environment, uh, preparation for school to work, work transition. And this uh, no, no disciplinary teaching are provided by what we name the Ecole des Docteurs de Toulouse, of the University of Toulouse, that is a structure that federates all the PhD schools of Toulouse. And they call the Doctor de Toulouse as a unique, dedicated international PhD office that is in charge of identifying and organizing the supply of PhD proposals. So the doctoral school also benefits from Agrinion through the pooling of uh, doctoral modules for all the members of Agrinion. And also for the benefits also of the PhD training program and the, the Aquinion International Research Facility. Also, these programs aim to improve the employability of uh, doctors through international opportunities, but also by an awareness of the major challenge of society. So finally, uh, SCVAB uh, benefits also from uh, the training of two. Uh, government label graduate school of research. These graduate schools aim to strengthen the links between uh, training and research in two topics the topics of uh, bioeconomy, biotechnology for biosource economy, and the other topic is ecology, evolution, and functional biology in relation with uh, the lab laboratory of excellence. So Every PhD student can create an individual career path that is based on his personal and professional plan. So I thank you for your attention.
be happy to answer your question, but if I cannot, I, I'm an intermediary, and so I, I can take the answer for my, my colleagues. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Veronique, for an overview. Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Edmund Rock. Dr. Rock, are you here? Yes. yes. Uh, I'm here. Yes. I'm here, yes. So. I will. Uh, I will share the screen for you. Okay. So uh, let me know if you can. Uh, yeah. So, sorry, see but the, uh, shared screen. The, the internet is uh, is really unstable. But uh, I, I will try to to show you something. Okay. I have shared the screen <laughs> of the presentation uh, you had sent me. So can you see it on my screen? Yeah, I, I, I can go on. So perhaps I can ask you to change the, uh, to push the button, you know, to change the- Yes, the yes, slide, of course, okay? of course, of course. Okay, so uh, first of all, I would like to, to tell very good evening to each of you. And I'm seeing that uh, we are more than 100 people uh, joined uh, in that meeting. And thanks again, so to, to, to join us. After this, uh, I would like to, to start my presentation within the 10 minutes allowed by the organizers and within the three objectives mentioned in, in that slide. And to begin with the conclusion of my intervention, I would like to, to give you these two take home messages. The first one is that INRAE as an exclusive research institute is not intended to deliver diplomas exclusively released in France by the doctorate schools of the university, but INRAE are able to offer some laboratories to students for their PhD thesis, thesis and uh, or master trainings. The second message is that the international strategy of the institute is based on scientific excellence and not on geographical uh, interest. And for the first point, next slide, please. And for the next slide. Ambika, next slide. Yes, I'm changing. <laughs> Is, I think it's a bit slow. Can you see? So for, for the first point, um, I would like to mention that uh, since its creation in 1959, the Institute through a geopolitical that uh, um, for the first point so the, the since the creation of in 1959 this uh, institute of INRAE through a geopolitical strategy has established uh, research centers co to cover all uh, French territory and overseas while formally associating with the universities and agricultural high schools of the territory this is why this institute is under the supervision of both ministries of agriculture and of higher education Today there are, next slide, today there are 18 research centers spread in all metropolitan and overseas uh, regions, conventionally linked to 33 local universities, but also with other research institutes involved more or less specifically in agricultural sciences such as CIRAD, IRD, and CNRS. Now this is not this slide. Okay. I don't know which one. Uh, do I have to go in front or back? Because I think there's a huge connection problem here, which is happening. So here are some examples of uh, research labs and research centers covering the items of biodiversity or ecology or agronomy. And I would like to mention that for ecology and agronomy, we in, in RAE, we use the term of agroecology to, uh, to, to put together these uh, two uh, visions of agriculture. Toxalin, for instance, is a, a lab, and I think that you had some very interesting information by Dr. Uh, Veronique Gerard. And in the South, for instance, there is also another lab developing projects on biotechnology and uh, apply to environment uh, issues such as waste management or biogas from these ways. In the East, you, you can find out uh, a research center covers three main areas, including the one on agroecology, biodiversity in crop systems. And this one in the south here, uh, 
develops also agroecology team, but rather in the designing and management of rural ter territories. This one in the center of France, next slide, uh, involved are involved more in the pasture uh, farming systems. And the next slide. And I would like to, to, to note that uh, for, for your information, so this type of information on INRA centers and INRA laboratories, you can find them in our website, uh, in the website of the Institute, and I will be back later in my presentation. So before developing the second part, next slide. Uh, the second part of my speech is on the international strategy in India. And I would like to remind you that this strategy is often, if not exclusively, based on scientific excellence and not on geographical priorities developed, for instance, in other research institutes, such as CIRAD. We lost... Uh... And the four, the four main the four main priorities uh, are agricultural sciences, plant and animal sciences, food sciences, and obviously ecology and environment. And I should say that several of the projects developed and the resulting publications include today terms of uh, the, the today terms of interest, I mean agronomy and biodiversity or ecology and biodiversity. Now, I want to develop why and what is developing in INRAE and India cooperation. The first question is why are we going to this strategy to develop cooperation with India? Next slide. Next slide, Ambika. Because actually, so this uh, cooperation is based, as I told you, on scientific uh, excellence. And because the number of co cooperation, as you see here in, 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 the, in the right hand side, the number of co publications constantly in eight papers in that period for the last 10 years period. And more interestingly, you can see that uh, almost more than 30% of these publications are ranked as the top 10% cited worldwide. And the next slide shows you also the Indian states in the co-publications. And you can see that the South India, and you can see that the uh, next slide, you can see that this, the, one second. getting stuck so yeah i think it's fine now edmo you're on mute edmo you're muted here edmo you're muted so we won't be able to hear you Edmo, you're on mute. I think uh, we lost him. We lost him, yes. Actually, there's a network problem. Uh, so I think probably we can uh, continue with Magali uh, because we will lose time otherwise. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yes, so Dr. Magali Dufour, if uh, you can present. Yes, I will share my screen too. Um, hmm. oh, strange, I don't find my presentation here. Um, let me try it again. Yeah. Okay, too bad, let me see. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so many uh, windows open in my screen, I'm sorry. So you should see it now? Yes. Can you, can you yes. see yes. it? Okay? Yes, yes, perfect. we can yes. see now. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody, good evening. 
And uh, well, first I must mention that I'm, I'm talking about CIRAD, and CIRAD is not a university, it's a research center. So um, CIRAD has been mentioned by Edmund uh, just a while ago, and it's the French Agricultural Research and International Cooperation Organization, and it's working for the sustainable development of tropical and Mediterranean regions. It's, it's a French public uh, research institution. Um, along with our partners, we are convinced that agriculture has a central role uh, in major transitions. Here are some key words. Uh, uh, the major transitions that are required to guarantee a sustainable culture for every country in the global south. So generating and sharing new knowledge, contributing to innovation processes and building capacity and skills for stakeholders in, in, in southern countries in order to support sustainable development. And those are all uh, the drivers of our operation. Um, so in our new uh, strategic vision, we stress on six different axes of research, six thematic themes. First, biodiversity as a level of, level of development and resilience. Integrated approach to plant, animal, and ecosystem health. It's like global health, it's very important. Agroecological transition engineering, territories as levers for sustainable and inclusive development, and uh, also two other axes supporting the transition to a more sustainable, inclusive food systems. And finally, helping farming systems in the global south to adapt to climate change. Uh, in particular, the, the, the activities that center on all, all the aspects of biodiversity and, as I mentioned, also agroecological transition, the climate change, um, and also the de development of rural territories. We work in uh, more than uh, 50 countries on every continent, and uh, we have a, 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 a 1,650 staff members, including 800 researchers, and among, among them, about 300 are assigned or overseas well, in the South. Um, we are backed by a global network of, part of partners. On the map, you can see what we call platforms in partnership for research and training. We call them DPs, and these are long-term partnerships Unfortunately, we don't have yet any of those platforms in India, but we do have several research programs within India. Uh, what would be uh, interesting for you today is that we welcome uh, many PhD students. Like every year, we have about three, 300 PhD students, and 60% of those are from southern countries, from tropical and Mediterranean countries. Um, we also welcome uh, some postdocs, and uh, we, well, we um, receive and we welcome and train in our laboratories more than 800 researchers and technicians that come for uh, short-term uh, stays in the lab. So, it, and this is each year, so it's, it's quite important. Um, I saw some of the questions that, that were asked in the question and answer, and someone asked about the language. I would say French is not compulsory to, to come here to see because our, our staff is uh, like, first it's somehow international and also is used to, to travel abroad, so uh, English is a good thing of communicating. Um, talking about doc, uh, PhDs, we are connected to two main uh, école doctoral, doctoral schools. Uh, the first one is uh, the one um, in University of Montpellier, and it's called Gaia. It, it deals with biodiversity, agriculture, uh, food, environment, earth, water. And it's also co-accredited with the uh, Montpellier Supagro that one was mentioned earlier. It's an agronomic school, Agroparitech, another agronomic school, and it, it is also Gaia is also co-accredited to uh, Ecole des Mines d'Alès, is mining school in Alès. 
The second uh, doctoral school we are connected with is ABS. It's the doctoral school of agroparitech, and ABS means agriculture, food, biology, environment, and health. So you see there's a lot of topics that can be uh, useful. And um, well, I will, I will finish my, my talk here, and uh, then we'll be able to answer some of the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Magli Dufer, for a detailed presentation. Now I would uh, come to Sawmin. Uh, Sawmin, would you like to share your experience and first-hand information? Uh, also, one point I would like to make, if you're using your microphone, uh, try holding it as close as possible to increase the audibility because some of the words are being uh, sunken in. So just for the clarity, uh, I would just request all of you to do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I hope I'm audible. Yes. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. So I am showman and I am doing my PhD at University of Deren On. And I will be sharing my experience as a PhD seeker and as a PhD student in France. Uh, as, in my final year of master's as a PhD seeker, uh, I kept myself uh, broad enough uh, that I can do my PhD anywhere in the world. Uh, if I considered even India and uh, Europe and US everything. And for that, I actually subscribed to some mailing lists such as Yeti, Evolder, and Ecolog. In those mailing lists, uh, there are uh, like to, to, uh, from the from all over the world, uh, people post uh, if they have a position, uh, they have a PhD position in the lab. So from there, I saw this PhD position, and then I approached to my supervisor with my CV and my uh, cover letter. Then. Uh, Getting a positive feedback from him, I officially applied to the doctoral school and attended the interview. And then I got it. And then as a PhD student, after joining uh, this University of Rain on, I see PhD in France is quite different than PhD in India. First of all, PhD here is three years. So you don't have any time to do pilot, especially if you are working in a field uh, related project. Uh, so, uh, and if that is season dependent, so you cannot basically exp um, do a pilot and lose a season. So that is why, and uh, here PhD, for PhDs training is for 100 hours. Uh, so, that, uh, so you cannot do a PhD, you cannot do a good PhD if you uh, don't have training in that particular field from your masters. So that is why uh, I think if you are choosing uh, France as a PhD place, you first try to find your expertise and uh, what you want to do. Then you need to find which all French researchers actually are doing research in that field. And then you can directly contact with that supervisor with those people and you can also uh, get um, the news of uh, available positions from this mailing list and then you can apply but uh, like i was just uh, talking about the shortcoming of this three years phd duration but there is a positive side as well uh, positive side is your uh, phd you are being awarded in three years. So you are saving two years of your life if you are doing PhD in India in comparison to that. And then uh, your PhD project here in France is actually decided before you join the project. In India, you actually spend almost on and half year to explore the subject and decide your PhD project. So here it is already decided and you know what you are going to do. And other than that, here, 
when you are doing PhD in France, the PhD process doesn't actually affect your personal life. In India, when I was doing my master's, I myself was working more than 12, 13 hours a day, and I saw many PhDs doing that. Uh, here, you work in office hours, that is morning eight to evening six, and you still have two hours of lunch time in between. And after the, like outside the office hours, your life is your own. So PhD doesn't eat your personal life. And then other than this, why should you choose France as a uh, PhD destination? Because French universities offer state of the art uh, infra research infrastructure. And in French universities, there is a good research culture that, uh, People everywhere in the canteen, everywhere people are discussing with each other, and they are like everyone is improving, and in that everyone has the same input. Like uh, the the faculties are learning from students, the students are learning from faculties, and everyone is improving. So my time is over. I will stop here, and uh, probably I will then. Uh, join again in the question answer session. I have actually segregated questions in groups, so I think I can join there. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you for sharing your input, Saman. Now it's time to take the questions from the participants. Uh, some of the questions have already been answered by the speakers. Uh, let me take the questions one by one. The first question is coming from Divya Nandan. Divyanandan has completed his MSc in Disaster Management and MPhil in Environmental Management. He's searching for a PhD position in either of the above mentioned course or in ecological field. So he wants to know about the university uh, offering such uh, courses and also scholarships. So I will, if, yes. Yeah, if no, no other person is answering, then I can take this up. Is that uh, okay? I'm directing this to the speakers as well as to the alumni. So anyone, anyone, anyone can answer the question. Uh, okay. So this question is a common question many people uh, are asking that is about funding opportunities and application procedure. So uh, at the uh, introduction, Ambika, uh, I think, has answered part of it, that uh, in France, you cannot do a PhD without funding. If you have your own funding, uh, such as uh, Marie Curie or uh, Roman Chapak, you can directly approach to a faculty and join. And other than that, faculties have their uh, like faculties have their project proposal, and from that they acquire uh, their own funding and you can contact them and they have all the rights to accept a student if they have funding. And other than that, uh, university, universities has some doctoral schools and university fund some PhD positions in the doctoral schools. So you can directly apply to the doctoral school. I hope this answer it partly. Magali, would you like to add something to this? Uh, yes, maybe this this was a, a good answer, but maybe I can uh, complement with a from a, a standpoint from a research institute that very often we have a, a PhD or students who want to take over a PhD that write to us, and uh, actually I advise them to identify a research unit that would, uh, would, would be uh, suitable for, for the subject, contact them because sometimes researchers have a research project that includes fellowships for PhDs. So then you don't have to uh, go to the doctoral school and uh, apply for, for a subject, you can directly uh, if, if the scientist, the research uh, unit is okay with your your, um, your, your courses or, or what you what you did uh, your studies, then you can you can directly uh, apply to the doctoral school with the fellowship from a research project. 
All right. So next question is, uh, I, you have answered it before. So French language required for doing PhD. So no, I mean, it has been answered before also. Now, uh, the next question is about the age limit. So this is a general question. Anyone can answer any age limit for doing PhD or for starting PhD. Okay. Uh, I am not an administrative person. So, sorry. Veronica. Yes, um, yes, no, uh, to my knowledge, uh, the age is not, uh, there is no limit. The problem often in France is that uh, if you um, perform a PhD late, it's difficult to get a position, an academic position. But uh, um, to my knowledge, there is no limit for an inscription at the PhD school. It's not. Uh, Yes, and I just wanted to add an example. Uh, there is someone in our department who is 38 hours old and uh, doing PhD. Yes, so moving to the next question. Uh, this is a question from Gautam, working as a research biologist in the Wildlife Institute of India. Uh, Gautam is searching for a right institute for doing PhD in wildlife or ecology. He's also looking for funding. Veronique, Magali, if you would like to take up this question. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. He's a scientist. He's working. He's the research biologist in Wildlife Institute of India. Oh, okay. And uh, is now planning to start PhD uh, in wildlife. And he's also looking for funding. I think it's, it's possible uh, under the framework of continuous education because in France, uh, at CIVAP PhD school, some uh, salaries of uh, French institutes of research of abroad uh, institutes uh, can, uh, can, be, uh, can have, uh, have the possibility of, in the framework of continuous education to, to make a PhD, are you sure? Mm -hmm. Depends on uh, the kind of financing, depends on the institute, but it's possible to be. Mm -hmm. Next question is, can I pursue a PhD during the COVID times and how to start? Magali? The student the wants to know about COVID time. Yes, COVID during time. this time. Yeah, this time. Um, no, of course, the, the PhD, the, the doctoral school continue to, to address, uh, well, to, to receive uh, students uh, and, uh, and subjects and uh, fellowships and so on. So there's no, for now, there is no interruption of uh, registration for a uh, PhD, uh, as far as I know. All right, so next question, uh, Magali and Veronica. Uh, this is like, is English proficiency test required for uh, starting a PhD? Any IELTS, TOEFL test required? Uh, the tests are not required uh, for the registration, but uh, for um, during the PhD, uh, it is uh, mandatory to have uh, a level of English, uh, English speaking. Uh, examination in the PhD graduation is obtained after attaining a level, but at the, for the regi registration and the entry of the PhD school, there is no, no right. so, so, Okay, so no test requirement as such. So next, we have a very interesting question. Uh, is there any possibility for doing a PhD in the intersection of public policy, law, Conservation and biodiversity. Yes, uh, Veronic or Magali. Yes, well, I, I, I guess well, and also to uh, to answer uh, also the the other person who asked about uh, natural uh, spaces. Uh, there's possibility to to undertake a PhD maybe at the. National Museum and uh, All right. uh, yeah, I think uh, for natural spaces, environment and so on, there's possibility. And for law and uh, public policies, uh, there's also uh, universities and places in, in, in 
Paris Tech Science School. Uh, so school that where you can do a PhD in Fundraising. So it's possible. It's, yeah, it's possible. Yes. So uh, the next question is: Any university-based funding is there for PhD? Yes. There are some I universities am, offering yes. funding on the PhD programs. Yes, and I am funded by the university actually. All right. So you can have your input. Yeah. So every university has. Um, uh, every university has some funding for each of their doctoral school every year and uh, say doctoral school uh, has in, in, in that field has 50 different uh, supervisors and they give only 10 uh, fellowship 10 PhD fellowships and they then ask the doctoral uh, uh, supervisors to compete for these positions and win it and they need to win it in collaboration with the PhD student. So the uh, supervisor need to propose a uh, uh, project proposal to the doctoral school and the, uh, uh, the applicant needs to prepare for it and attend the interview and get it. Veronique, would you like to add something? Um, no, I think it's very complex. Effectively, the PhD contract that are found in by the Republic Institute and the uh, the PhD is awarded in this contract, but it's important for the students uh, again, uh, as uh, Magali said, to contact the research institutes, the research uh, to find a good uh, research laboratory that corresponds to the, the project. And I have to, to contact it because it's possible for us to, to propose a subject and uh, so it's, it's a selective process, but it's, uh, it's you have a chance get home. All right. Yeah, also, please. Yes, I, uh, I just wanted to confirm what uh, Salman said. And uh, for example, at CIRAD, we give away uh, each year about 10 fellowships, which are half PhD fellowships, and we give them to the doctoral school and then the doctoral school has to find the other half of each fellowship, for example, by a, a regional administration or research projects and so on. So uh, it's, it's possible to, to have uh, fellowships like this, uh, this way. And, uh, the mm -hmm. All right. So the next question is uh, for Veronica and Magli both. Now this is coming from Indian institution. So they are saying, how can the Indian institution approach the French institution to organize workshops together uh, in this field of ecology or agronomy? And how, I mean, what is the procedure to contact? Yes, Magali, would you like to say something? Uh, well, I guess uh, the procedure is, uh, is, is just to, to contact the well, identify a, a university or research center and contact the, the direction. Also make contact with, uh, like a consortium, like Agrinion, for example, that was mentioned by Veronique, uh, which can then dispatch all the, the questions in, among the members. Uh, what I would advise to ask to, at the French Institute to start with. Veronique, would you like to add something to this? Um, I think just uh, it's possible also to contact the uh, international relations departments of each institute. I think they can. So, All right. So it can be contacted through the international relations department. Okay. So the next question is Are PhD interviews happening online for taking admission into PhD? Are there any interviews happening online? Yes. Okay. I attended my interview online. Uh, like they have on campus interviews as well, but if you cannot attend that, you can attend online as well. Okay. So there is a possibility to attend the online interviews. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Our next question is like a student wants to join PhD program uh, after two years break post his masters. So is it possible if there's a gap of two years? Uh, so is it possible to join the PhD? Yes, uh, it is possible. Uh, the difficulty is uh, when there is a break is often to justify uh, this break when for when defending for the project for for a while in a PhD contract. But it's not uh, if you have a possibility of financing, if you have the finance, it's possible to, to be registered. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, maybe two years would be the, the maximum break. Because okay. after uh, a longer time, uh, you can still do a PhD, but then you are not uh, considered as a student, you are considered as a, as a worker in, a, like in continuous education. So it's not the same, um, the same price, of course. All right, our next question is also related to the same. Uh, now, uh, it's, is it mandatory to have work experience while applying for PhD? Does it help or one can even join straight away after master's or both? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what experience. So the next uh, work experience, uh, is it mandatory to have some kind of work experience after master's? Uh, no, 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 no. All right. Okay. Most of the students join directly, more than 90%, yes. I think. All right. Next question, maybe Somen can help in answering. Uh, is the PhD fellowship for a couple to survive if the partner is not working? Uh, yes, it is sufficient. Uh, because uh, when you are a PhD student in France, you are covered by the social security. Uh, and your salary without even without uh, social security, your salary is sufficient to survive with your partner. But uh, social security assist you uh, for finding a room or uh, to take care of your babies uh, and uh, medicines. So uh, say when you have a partner, you get more support from social security. So it is completely comfortable to stay okay. with your partner. All right. Okay, then one final question. Uh, the student is having a BTEC degree in biotechnology and currently pursuing his master's. So is he eligible for a PhD in biotechnology or uh, microbiology? The student is a graduate in biotechnology engineering and is pursuing his uh, master's in technology in rural technology and is now eligible for PhD in biotechnology or microbiology. Is he eligible for that? I am not sure about uh, biotechnology, but I know someone who did BTEC in biotechnology and then doing PhD in ecology actually. Okay. So, for ecology, it's possible. I have example. Veronica, you would like to say something? I, I think it's possible. I, it's uh, sometimes a student that have um, a diploma of engineering and biotechnology can continue with... Uh, so it depends, he can... Uh, ...the experience, uh, the, the background. Uh, the... And, and it depends on the need of the project. If a project needs a lot of modeling and you have that experience from your engineering and you can uh, do that modeling, then you are preferred, I think. Okay. All right. Uh, we have uh, taken questions that, I mean, maximum questions we can, but uh, uh, also if you have doubts and questions later on, uh, you can, uh, we are sharing the email IDs of the uh, panelists as well as uh, of the, uh, the scientific coordinator at French Embassy, Ms. Ambika. So the participants can contact her later. 
so before closing the session, I would like to uh, ask panelists for any concluding remarks. So Dr. Magali, if you want to say something. Uh, well, no, just, uh, well, thank you. And uh, I, I hope that we answered your, your questions. And uh, maybe a last uh, advice would be uh, to, to go on the, on the internet and to go to see uh, the Compass France uh, website, which is uh, very well done. Yes. And we have all the information and all the links to the different uh, places, institutions, universities, and uh, all the references for the different studies. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Veronic. So I thank you. Again, I said I am intermediary, but I can answer later to question and take uh, with answer from my colleagues. So like Magali, I think it's important to go to internet and see, you can visit the website of Agrinium that is very uh, complete, complete because it, it uh, contains all information about the training in agronomy, ecology, or the or these thematics, and it's more easier to find the labo research laboratory. And again, it's very important to seek its, its, um, its research laboratories. Yes, thank you. So, Min? Uh, yes, uh, I think every, uh, everything is being said. Uh, only one thing I want to mention, uh, that I saw a few questions uh, that people have concerns once they get the position or next uh, passport, visa and uh, accommodation. Uh, the thing is, you don't need to worry about all these. Uh, you secure your position and all these will happen. And everything is facilitated in a way that you do it in your age. Uh, say, uh, for your accommodation, you can do everything online. You can uh, apply for your accommodation insurance. You can apply for your uh, guarantor. Everything is online and it gets accepted. You apply online, it is being accepted online. And also when you arrive here at the very beginning, people think about how, how can I get into a place or I don't know, I have never been abroad before, how to uh, first explore it. And for that, uh, here in France, all the cities has body system. When you arrive, you, before you arrive, you apply and your body actually receives you and helps you uh, for your initial formalization, uh, finding your accommodation and everything. And we have uh, international mobility center in every cities that actually uh, takes care of all international researchers and their personal lives here. All right. Hello, do, you, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I think that the, 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 there were two mistakes uh, for, from my side. The first one is that the internet is uh, presently unstable, this is one point. But the other point is that uh, I think that I was considered as a participant only. I never, I, I hear you, I saw all the things, but I, 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 I didn't have the possibility to intervene because, you know, the two, uh, the two things which are uh, under the screen for, for microphone and, and camera uh, has been blocked by, I suppose, the manager. <laughs> oh, sorry. It doesn't matter, but uh, okay, so it's... But it was very interesting. Uh, I'm very sorry to not to, to participate. I was not able to do. Uh, I already wished to do, but uh, nothing happened in my, in my side. So, sorry. Dr. Edmund Rock, you can share your uh, email contact with the uh, participants so that uh, they can contact you. Uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Yes. No problem. So just perhaps two points uh, for Magali Dufour, because I didn't know that the CIRAD will participate in that meeting, but... Have we lost him again? We lost Dr. Yeah, I think yeah, it's really bad. We can hear you. Yeah, it would be of interest to, to, uh, to indicate to the, to the Indian students that uh, CIRAD as a particular uh, point uh, and working in a Réunion Island, where there were some possibilities for Indian students to join also some of the uh, projects developed in, in that island. So I think that this perhaps could be an important information to, to give to the participant. 
And I would like also to thank uh, Schumann because uh, I asked him to tell a little bit this, his own story. And uh, I was very, very happy to, and I was very surprised also somewhere to see that uh, uh, some points are, are very uh, are very strange for me because when he said, for instance, that uh, doing his PhD thesis in France, it's, uh, it's cool somewhere because we have enough time to do that and so on. And in India, it, you, you are, uh, hello, you are, um, yeah, the, the, your life is involved in, in, your, in your study. So this point is very, very interesting. And the other point is that the, uh, the relationship between uh, the, um, uh, the students and the faculties also, I think that uh, I didn't know that this type of uh, relationship is, uh, has been seen by, by a friend, uh, Indian student as a good point. Because for me, uh, I al always ask to the faculties to be more open, let's say, to the students and not, uh, okay, to, to, to really lis listening them and to help them. So th So thank you, Dr. Rock. And uh, like the speaker said, I, was, I would also like to add something like Campus France has developed tools to help current and future foreign researchers understand the world of French research better. So Campus France manages the platform PhD in France, which lists all the subjects of master's internship in laboratories, as well as doctorate and postdoctorate subjects. They are offered to French and foreign students from French institutes of higher education. Also take the advantage of the excellence of French research to continue your work. On June 8, 2017, the president of France Mr. Emmanuel Macron issued an appeal to climate researchers around the world to come to France to find out more about this appeal and to register, visit the site, make our planet great again. So with this, uh, I would like to th thank our panelists, Dr. Edmund Rock, Professor Veronique Gerard, Dr. Magali Dufour, and Samen Malik for a wonderful interactive session today. I would also like to thank the participants. Wish you all luck for your future endeavors. Thank you and have a great evening.